When you think of indoor games in the NFL, I'm sure you think of stadiums like the Silver Dome, the Astro Dome, the King Dome, the Metro Dome, and so many others. But shockingly enough, the first indoor NFL game came many, many, many years before any of those stadiums were even a thought. Back in 1932 was the NFL's first indoor game. And funny enough, that was the game to determine the champion of the NFL in 1932. So in 1932, the Chicago Bears faced off against the Portsmouth Spartans, who are now the Detroit Lions, on December 18th, 1932. 1932 inside the Chicago Stadium, which was practically brand new at the time. The whole reason why the game got moved from Wrigley Field, where the Bears played for many, many years, was because of extremely cold temperatures and the NFL didn't want to even mess with being outdoors. So therefore, why the game was moved to Chicago Stadium. Back in 1930, the Bears and the Cardinals actually played an exhibition game at this here stadium. That game was also moved indoors due to extreme cold weather. Now, the reason why the 1931 isn't the first indoor NFL game because that was an exhibition game and this here one that we're talking about here today in 1932 counted it determined an NFL champion so that is why it is technically the first indoor NFL game so some crazy little caveats about the Chicago Stadium to play football in this I want to call arena from here on out they had to play on a 80 yard field and only 60 yards between the goal lines so practically is half a field that they're playing on and the field itself when it comes to width is only 45 yards wide 10 yards narrower than the regulation width at the time. The goalposts there were moved from the end lines to the goal lines. Every time a team crossed the 10 yard line, the ball was moved back 20 yards to allow for the shortened field. And something too that the NFL apparently didn't do before, but kept after this game was for the first time, all play started with the ball on or between the hash marks, which were 10 yards away from the sideline. So as we know from football, anytime you get tackled on the far side of either side of the field, the ball gets put on the far side of that hash mark or if you get tackled in the middle of the field, that's where the ball gets placed. But I guess before that, they did not do that. So another crazy thing to add to this game, a week before this game was actually played, they had a circus in town and the circus put a bunch of tan bark on top of the concrete that was on the arena floor. So they pretty much played on bark. And one of the crazy things too, there was a ton of elephant manure. There was so much of it and it produced such a bad odor that it caused a Bears player to actually throw up on the field. So these men are playing on a makeshift football field and the field itself is pretty much bark and manure let that sink in for a second how hardcore is that right and the whole reason this game was even played was because this game needed to determine a tiebreaker between the spartans and the bears and back in the day before the nfl had a true championship game the championship was based on winning percentage and since the spartans and bears had the same winning percentage they had to play this game to determine the winner they had exactly the same winning percentage but also, oddly enough, the Packers were also right in the mix of things. And oddly enough, the loser of this championship game actually had to finish in third place, not second place. The Packers actually finished in second place in 1932. So the final score of the, I'm going to call it 1932 championship, was the Bears 9 and the Spartans 0. So the final standings for that NFL season were the Bears, the Packers, and then the Spartans. So again, super, super odd circumstance how this came about but according to how the NFL used to do things this is just how it all panned out with winning percentages and they decided to play this game so even though the Spartans lost in the championship game they ended up having to finish third. Also too, for being such a makeshift game, there was actually a pretty big crowd for the time. There was over 11,000 people in attendance at this championship game. And some other little fun information that I found about this game, the night of December 18th, when this game was actually played, the weather was actually a lot warmer than earlier anticipated. It was actually 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Even though it was forecasted to be much colder, they probably could have actually played it outside with that weather. According to accounts of this game, the Bears quarterback, John Doling's first pass flew into the stands as did most punts and kickoffs. One even collided with a Chicago Blackhawks sign, and one punt even hit the organist as he was playing his instrument. And by the end of the game, only one punt actually got returned. The rest just flew into the stands. So how the Bears scored their nine total points here. So according to accounts of the game, in the fourth quarter, the Bears actually scored on a very controversial play. There was a handoff, and the running back pulled up and threw the ball into the end zone to score. But back in those days, rules mandated that a forward pass had to be 
thrown from at least five yards behind the line of scrimmage. So the Spartans argued that he did not drop back five yards to throw the ball, but there was no replay back then and the referees thought that he did. So the touchdown stood and the Bears later scored a safety after the Spartans fumbled the ball out of their end zone. So that's how you got nine points. A touchdown, extra point, and a safety. That is how the Bears ended up scoring their nine total points in the first ever indoor NFL game at Chicago Stadium. There's probably more information to learn about this game. There's only a few pictures that exist, but wouldn't this have been something to see on film? Like actually have this game recorded in some archive. It'd be awesome to actually see. But I've heard about this, I don't know, a couple years ago, and I never heard about it before. But I thought it was quite interesting that the first indoor NFL game happened all the way back in 1932. And again, there's other accounts like exhibition games, and there were college football games that were played indoors before this. But even with that said, I thought it was quite interesting that the first indoor NFL game came all the way back in 1932. Of course, this happened due to some crazy circumstances due to cold weather, but still, I'm kind of glad it happened because how unique of a situation is this? You know, I mean, we're still talking about it today, and I just wanted to bring it to people's attention. Maybe you've never heard about this before, and this is your first time hearing it, and it'll spark you to do some of your own research. Regardless, though, I just kind of wanted to cover this as a topic because I just find it really cool. I really do. I love obscure sporting events like this that you would never see today. I, I, I love talking about just kind of odd things like this. Kind of like how the World Series for baseball used to have a best of nine for a few years. I actually did a whole video about that. Make sure to check it out. And here for the 1932 championship is just another instance of that. It's just another odd thing that happened many, many years ago that we would never see today in the NFL. So with that said, what are your thoughts on the first indoor NFL game? Let me know your thoughts down below. And while you're down there, if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, that'd be greatly appreciated. Until next time, guys, everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching.